Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Unshackled Waves, Episode 5. Uh, once again, you're here with your editors-in-chief, uh, me, Tim Wilms, and Sukith Fernando. Hello, everyone. And now this is our Tuesday review show episode, where we will discuss the, the news and events and inform our listeners about uh, what's going on and uh, in the state of liberty and freedom. Uh, this week, there's plenty of topics to talk about, uh, but uh, isn't there, Sukas? There are, there are, but today we will be using three main topics. Right, Tim? Yeah, so we're going to be talking about the US election, which we will probably know the result in 24 hours' time. So we're all oh, very nervous, <laughs> excited. Very excited. We, we, we don't know what's going to happen. Uh, back here at home, we're still, uh, we're still seeing the um, problems with 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act and also the uh, topic of uh, same-sex marriage is in the news again because the plebiscite uh, got defeated yesterday. But we'll start with the, with the US election and, yeah, it's the final countdown. It is. I mean, 24 hours. I just can't wait till Trump wins. <laughs> well, that well, that's what we're hoping. All of the yeah. uh, all of the polling though says that Hillary she's got about a three three point lead uh, in the polls nationally, and she's still ahead in enough of the the swing states. Uh, but a lot a lot of those a lot of those swing states such as uh, yeah, New Hampshire, uh, Michigan, Florida. Uh, North Carolina, they're still, Trump can still win them. They can, Trump can actually win in many states. Um, and the thing is with polls, the thing is they're not always accurate. I mean, look at Brexit. They, they were all saying that Remain will win the, um, the referendum, but Brexit won. So there's still hope. Yes, but the, but the thing is, though, you've got to remember, though, that the British polls that were uh, not only wrong about uh, Brexit, but they're also wrong about the uh, UK general election the year before. So uh, I've, I've, I've sort of got the impression that UK polls just really suck. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> now, in, the, in the US, there's, there's way, more, way more polls. I mean, there's... There are, there are. And, um, I mean, the thing is... In the, the elections in the US take, like the actual campaigning take like months, don't they? So I think there's a difference with that as well. Well, this has been, uh, this presidential campaign's been going since about June 2015 when, when all yeah. the candidates announced. Uh, the, uh, the person who's most reliable about this is, is Nate Silver of uh, 538. So he's got Hillary with a 70% chance of winning at the moment and with a 3.5% uh, lead nationally. But we also had our own um, article on the polls. Yes. <laughs> and we, yeah, we had that. And um, it was written by um, Damien Ferry, who is actually the national deputy leader of the Young Conservatives of the UCP, which is the United Conservative Party. Um, and the thing is, he has a very different story. And he has used a um, an analysis by Professor Alan J. Lichtman from the American University, who predicts a Trump victory. Uh, but even I like, you know, even though he's he's got all the elections right since what was it, nineteen eighty eight. You know, I, I don't I don't think you know that because uh, because there's been heaps of people that have uh, or universities that have come out who say we've predicted every uh, presidential election since whatever. There was one I think last year which predicted that Bernie Sanders would be president. Okay, well, <laughs> well, the thing is, I mean, he has used a very systematic method because he has used a 13 key prediction system, um, which is what the system is called. And he has predicted correctly since 1984. So uh, I haven't given up hope yet. I haven't given up hope at all, actually. Um, because, you know, he, he has a very legitimate argument because he does use a very good system, a very analytical system to predict um, the results. And, yeah, and he has published it in his book called The Keys to the White House. Um, 
but the media hasn't really reported on this much, which is ex which I expected. I mean, it's the media, but yeah, I hope he I hope he's right because he says that Trump will get three forty three. Um, and Clinton will get 195, so that's really good. Almost, it's almost too good to be true. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, um, yeah. Because, well, yeah. Even though there is, yeah, all this, all this polling, we're still, we still don't know because um, there, there is this theory that people are too afraid to tell pollsters that they're going to vote yeah. for Trump. And, exactly, and it yeah. also is significant that the polls have tightened significantly in the past couple of weeks. I mean, everyone was predicting a Hillary landslide, and she could even win uh, states such as such as Arizona. Uh, but now, uh, some people are saying it's because of the the FBI investigation, which was back on, but now it's uh, now it's been uh, called off again. Uh, whether that contributed yeah. to the tightening of the polls or whether it was, you know, because it's close to the election, people were just being a bit more honest about their vote. Yeah, I mean, the, the thing is, like, Trump wasn't even expected to come this far at all. We had predictions that said he will actually leave, leave the um, campaign um, in the first month. We, ha we had those predictions, but look where we are now. So, so uh, I, I love, like, there was yeah. this, uh, like, uh, a lot of the Australian commentators were saying, oh, it'll definitely be you know, Marco Rubio. Yeah, yeah, they did say that. Or um, it was um, or Ted Cruz. Mm. People said Ted Cruz might win as well. Um, but you know, none of it came true. None of it came true at all. They were all wrong. And Trump easily won the republic, the Republican convention, and he, he is now. So I, I am very, I am quite confident to be honest that he will win. Yeah. <laughs> Well, let's talk, about, yeah, let's talk about, uh, you know, what either result will mean. So uh, yeah. if Trump, Trump wins, that'll, that'll mean that a lot, a lot will change in the world. Well, a lot will change for, you know, Western civilization because the, the elites will have, uh, that, that'll be a big blow to them, um, you know, because they want, you know, uh, to suppress, you know, free speech, uh, have more identity politics and have open borders. But if Trump gets in there, uh, all, all their plans are going to be ruined. They will be, and their plans to take away um, gun rights, the right to defense, their plans for abortion, they will all be ruined, which is a good thing. And I think we will see an alignment. We will see um, America more aligned with its original purpose, you know, more aligned with the founding fathers, their ideologies. Um, but if Clinton gets in, that'll be a different story. We will see more progressive politics, which means more, re more regressive politics. Um, and they'll just move away and America will be ruined because because we'll get that we'll get that later with the nuclear war thing, but yeah, Trump he will allow America to sort of um, align more with its original um, historic sort of purpose as a nation who upholds freedom, capitalism, um, free speech, all that. Yeah, and of course, if Hillary wins, we'll basically get a social justice warrior president. Yeah, we'll get that, and we'll also get a nuclear war. Yeah, because... We'll, we'll get or, World War Three. Or because, yeah, I think that the reason Obama hasn't done anything uh, about uh, Russia at the moment, because they're, they're, they're all saying that, you know, Russia's behind all these WikiLeaks uh, emails being released, <laughs> I think they're holding off on any action against Russia because it's uh, because it's so close to an election, but if Hillary wins I, and uh, it'll be a continuation of uh, Democrats in the White House, and I think Obama will want to want to do something about Russia, uh, you know, in the months before he leaves office, and we, of course we know that Hillary will do something. She will. I mean, it'll. You'll not only see a continuation of Democrats, you'll see a continuation of neoconservatives in the White House. Um, and, you know, we, we know that she plans to have a no-fly zone, um, a very neoconservative thing to do. Yeah, she will means, intervene more. Yeah, which means that a no-fly fly zone means that um, Russian jets will be shot down over Syria, which yeah. Russia, Russia will, will not tolerate. 
Yeah, I mean, the thing is, people are saying that, well, the Russians won't fly planes. Well, the thing is, they will fly planes, definitely, um, over the no-fly zone. Well, they've been, um, well, and they've they been very effective in uh, decimating ISIS in Syria. But, they have uh, been, because, yeah. Because Russia's doing it, not the US, that's why the yeah. neocons are saying, oh, no, Russia's method of doing it is terrible. Yeah, I mean, yeah. In fact, the thing is, with having um, a no-fly zone, the neocons in America can actually control what Russia. Well, they think they can control what Russia does, um, because they obviously want Russia to stop defeating ISIS, because they're getting all the um, the support now. So yeah. they would try and come up with something to actually stop them from doing it. And a no-fly zone seems effective, but the thing is, right. it's very. It's not effective. It's radical. And Hillary has also said that uh, uh, no, she's accused yeah, Russia of being behind the WikiLeaks dump. She said that we we must treat cyber attacks the same as uh, you know uh, military attacks, and we we should be on hand with appropriate uh, technological, economic, and military responses. So that's that's a pretty inflammatory line. That is, I mean, uh, it's it's a threat, isn't it? She's making a threat to Russia. Yeah. Um, and that's going to uh, uh, that's not going to go well with Putin because he won't take threats like that. Um, yeah. yeah. And, and also, I don't think there's uh, there's anything wrong with Russia trying to uh, influence public opinion. I mean, uh, you know, they have a stake in the election result as well. I mean, Trump wants to to you know get along with the Russians, so why shouldn't they you know prefer a, a Trump presidency? Tim, the thing is, there is nothing wrong. Yeah, there is. You're right. There's nothing wrong with Russia doing it because because this is the, the United States. We know the U.S. We know Clinton tried to rig, uh, rig elections in the Ukraine. They try to rig elections in other parts of the world. So the thing is, it's very ironic for her to say these things against Russia when she has actually promoted rigging rigging elections in other countries so um yeah it's very it's a she just goes it just shows that she's a hypocrite and, and all of these emails they're all real emails i mean they've they they've, they've all been sent you know th uh, to various uh, dnc staff they're just she's just trying to deflect attention away from that they're embarrassing to her yeah exactly she's just she's changing the subject she's sort of diverting attention from the fact that she hid all those things, she removed all those emails, she risked national national security, but she's blaming Russia because she wants to divert attention. And the scary thing is, her media is helping her. Well, CNN, and yeah, most NBC of the mainstream all... media, I mean, that's what the WikiLeaks email was like. There was so much collusion between uh, her campaign and the mainstream yeah. media. I mean, I mean just today, just today, I saw um, a, a WikiLeaks email that said um, it was a CNN, CNN asking the um, Clinton campaign to give them questions to ask Trump because they were interviewing Trump. So they asked them for questions. That's collusion. That is collusion. Uh, and, ha and how much have they tried to ignore these WikiLeaks emails? I mean, you hardly hear about it on the mainstream news. We Yeah, exactly. We never... It's only when there's like something very important that we hear um, WikiLeaks. So, for example, we know that the Clinton Foundation, um, Hillary used money from the Clinton Foundation to um, fund her daughter's wedding. Um, that was on the news on Facebook. Um, so it's only when it's like something really sort of big um, that's there. Well, big as in something that captures attention, but nothing um, sort of um, sinister that doesn't get into the mainstream media. And uh, if, uh, tr uh, God forbid, Trump does lose, I mean, obviously, <laughs> uh, you know, the elites and the mainstream politicians are hoping that uh, tr uh, Trumpism will just, you know, disappear, that everything will go back to normal and we'll just have, uh, you know, a standard uh, Republican running for president in 2020 and it will just all go back to normal, which is, no, this, will, th this movement will carry on. It will. It. This is just the beginning. It's just the beginning. There's more. Um, if he loses, which won't happen, <laughs> then uh, it's not the end at all. It's just it'll get worse um, for them. It'll get worse for them. And I just wanted to. I just want to say that Hillary Clinton actually should be barred from running for president. She should be because. Um, I, f I saw a video by a person called Bill Whittle on Facebook. Oh, he yes. uploaded a video. 
you, did you see that one? Yeah, and he said um, it was simple. It was simple, really. And he said that anyone who removes or doesn't return federal records have committed a felony according to federal law, and that's true. And the thing is, we know that Director Comey of, from the FBI said there were thousands. He said there were thousands that weren't returned. Therefore, she committed a felony. And secondly, um, he said that concealing or destroying these records um, means that she has committed a second felony. And she did, because she did destroy and conceal those records, her emails. Um, and he goes on to say that she should not be allowed to hold any office. That's what the federal law says, that anyone who conceals or destroys records should be barred from holding any office. And in fact, they should be fined or even prison for 10 years or both if they if this info deals with national security or defense, national security and defense. And the thing is, here she is as a candidate for the Democrats when she should be in prison for 10 years maximum and fined for everything she did. Well, mo uh, most people, can, uh, like a lot of people, compare what she did to this Marine who got sent to jail because he took photos inside uh, a US submarine which uh, contains uh, classified, well, you know, they don't want their enemies to know, you know, what, what's in their submarine. So he got sent to jail, yet Hillary Clinton could become president. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. He, I mean, he gets sent to jail, but Hillary is fine. I mean, she's probably the next president, even though she's meant to be in prison, even though she's meant to be barred from holding any office. It's just the thing is, I, mean, I think the blame, most people are blaming Hillary Clinton for everything. But the thing is, I feel like we should blame the Supreme Court as well for this situation we are in right now. Uh, why do you think that? Because... Ultimately, it's, they should be looking at the law. Ultimately, they should know that she should be barred from holding office. But well, they can't make any ruling see... unless the authorities decide to charge her. That's the thing. I suppose, yes. Yes, I suppose. Yeah, I'm, yeah, yeah. Uh, so it's going to be oh, uh, tense 24 hours. And of course, uh, if Trump does win, one of the uh, most satisfying immediate things will be just the meltdown on social media. Yeah, that'll be amazing. I mean, I'm waiting. Like, if Trump wins, I'm waiting for him to go, like, Obama, you're fired. Uh, and, and, of course, there's all these celebrities who've said they'll they'll move to Canada. Uh, Barbara Streisand said she'll, she'll move to Australia. Oh, we don't, we don't want her. Mm. No thanks. Um, she'll be, like, a refugee. I mean, if... Yeah, she'll be a re refugee, seriously. We don't want her here. <laughs> So we'll definitely have a lot to say uh, in the aftermath of the election, uh, but let's move yeah. on to our next topic. We'll go to domestic politics now. And on fri late Friday yeah. afternoon, uh, three University of Queensland technology students who uh, who were being sued under 18C of the Racial Discrimination Act uh, by an academic at the university uh, for uh, objecting to being kicked out of an Indigenous only computer lab, which is, I don't even know why there is one. Exactly. Uh, so the, the complainant in that case, uh, Cindy Pryor, she got triggered by what the students said on social media. And so she took them uh, all the way to the federal court and the judge said, no, this doesn't have any prospect of succeeding and so dismissed it. And so now, uh, well, she's... Uh, well, she already was looking like the the, uh, uh, the specialist of snowflakes, and of course, yeah. the, the Human Rights <laughs> Commission, who uh, you know d uh, encouraged her complaint along along the way. I mean, they didn't tell her that you know, no, this is a frivolous complaint. They uh, they actually extracted five thousand dollars each from three other students to make them settle. And so those students were intimidated to giving five thousand dollars each to Cindy Pryor, but these three other students said, "No, you know, we're not, we're not going to, um, you know, f uh, pay go away money." And so they took it to the the court, and it was dismissed. And now the Human Rights Commission is looking ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm pretty sure Julian Trix is triggered right now. Yeah, Trix and. Said. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Julian <laughs> triggered, and um. Because, and I, I actually don't know what's going to happen to Cindy Pryor, because well, in I, your article, you, 
you said that in your article, you said that she actually had post-traumatic stress disorder when she heard about yeah. the complaint. She, she couldn't be around uh, white people. She said she couldn't be around white people after the complaint. And uh, she was worried if she went back, uh, there'd be a KKK cabal of students. Yes. Yes, she was worried about a KKK presence in the, in the university. Yeah, she was. <laughs> um, who is racist now? Yeah. She can't be around white people. Yeah, and the fact that... Uh, you know, she kicked out uh, students from a computer lab because they weren't Aboriginal. Yeah, that's just, I mean, first of all, it's it's almost privilege, isn't it? Because they have an Aboriginal-only yeah. computer, computer lab in the university. That's 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 se that's segregation. Yeah. Oh well, uh, segregation is uh, it's becoming uh, trendy again. We're seeing uh, that university in in California demanding yeah. uh, segregated uh, spaces for uh, black students, and some universities uh, uh, are introducing segregated dorms. Yeah, we are. We are moving backwards in time, it looks like. Um, and that's exactly why the progressive left is actually regressive, because their measures actually result in a backward movement. And well, this is a perfect example. Well, because they think that there's, you know, like huge differences between, uh, ju uh, just based on, uh, j just based on race. I mean that, you know, if, like I would have like you know, uh, completely different, you know, life experiences uh, to you, and therefore I can't understand you, and therefore you should be threatened by me. <laughs> it's it's really it's a really um weird sort of mindset, I think. Yeah. I mean, they're portraying like uh, people of color as you know weak, uh, triggered people yeah. who need uh, you know, special consideration because they just you know can't can't make it on their own. Yeah, it's ultimately they're the ones ruining it for themselves. Ultimately, because they are the ones portraying themselves as weak. Um, they are the ones portraying themselves as easily hurt by small things, um, and it's just going to um, sort of propagate this notion that people of colour are probably a bit more, you know, um, inferior among the alt-right, for example. Yeah, and that, uh, you know, white people, like, they can't, they can't consider them, like, just another human. They have to consider them people with, like, this victim complex and uh, yeah. are oppressed and discriminated against. And so, therefore, we're supposed to, you know, treat them as, you know, special, which is ridiculous. It is. It's absolutely ridiculous and it's shameful really i mean back in the past students were protesting for free speech for for things that matter but now we have students protesting for segregation for these safe spaces and it's just it's 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 a shame really yeah and we hope that those students get back because their their legal costs have been about two hundred thousand dollars each yeah so we hope that they get get that back from uh, cindy Pryor, and there's some you know karma against her from bringing this ridiculous case and potentially ruining three students lives yeah and we hope that this will actually embolden an effort to remove 18c um well, or act at least reform 18C. Well, we hope, uh, but the thing is though, and this is the reason, I mean, Andrew Bolt, for example, has said, oh, Turnbull's been weak on this issue, but you know, if, uh, that's just because Andrew Bolt hates Malcolm Turnbull. I mean, the reason Malcolm yeah. Turnbull hasn't done anything about it because he knows he can't get it through the Senate. I mean, uh, Labor Greens, Nick Xenophon and Jackie Lambie, they oppose any change to 18C. And so he knows that it's, uh, it, it's going to be, uh, you know, costing uh, a lot of political capital when he's not when he's not going to even get it through. And of course, I also think it's a bit rich of Tony Abbott now to say, "Oh, let's reform." Yeah. You know, I, I, why didn't you do it when you were prime minister? You chickened exactly. out exactly. and say, "How can you be this big champion of free speech when you when you chickened out?" So you know, no, sorry, <laughs> don't get away with that. Yeah, and you did mention Jackie Lambie. Mm. Um, I find it really interesting that she. Um, supports 18C. Well, because she uh, claims that she's Aboriginal. Yeah, I suppose, which is an another thing we are seeing today, aren't we? We are seeing white people who are saying they are Aboriginal. Oh, we've got to be careful <laughs> about... Uh, 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 about saying that because, uh, you know, we could get uh, sued under oh, 18C. We could. 
we actually could get sued. Yeah, I'll, I'll stop. I'll stop there. Um, but we saw a similar thing with um, the cartoonist Bill Leak, which we have focused on for a, for a bit um, in one of our previous podcasts. Yes. Um, so that, uh, we hope he gets the. Yeah, so we get, we hope he gets this. He gets out of it as well, you know, because there was nothing. There was nothing offensive. It's the truth. It's the truth is harsh. Come yeah. on. So uh, his cartoon was just the truth accepted. And there, there was also, it's broken in the, the past day that Liberal MP Trent Zimmerman has now got an 18C complaint against him because at a <laughs> Liberal Party meeting he accused a uh, Liberal, uh, Liberal Party member of being involved in an ethnic branch stand ethnic branch stack I should say and so the, uh, the person was triggered by it said he felt humiliated and has, and has, uh, and has proceeded with an 18C complaint so it's basically turned into just this as it's called lawfare that uh, you know if I get triggered by something you know I'm going to run to the government to you know say someone's been mean to me and you know fix it for me yeah and it's just going to breed a generation of weak-minded, triggered people, ultimately. Because we are seeing this right now. We are seeing people complaining simply because they were humiliated, simply because they were offended. Well, what's going to happen to society now? What's going to happen to us as a human species now if people are going to complain on on this? Yeah. I, I mean, the, the law is just getting ridiculous now that 18C has become just a, you know, someone said something mean to me now. I mean, uh, it's... It, it's it's just it's just gotten to to the, to the absurd. It has, and it's just it's going to be hard for us conservatives and libertarians because now we are the extremists according to the left. You know, it's they won't attack us because they think we are extremists for being conservative for having right wing views. So we see cases where um, people commit suicide because the left actually hassles them so much. Um, that it's it gets too much. So uh, it's 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 really hard. it's a really different world. It's it's a really hard world now. Like, even though this uh, Queensland University case was like so ridiculous that you didn't s- that uh, you know no leftist uh, you know actually defended Cindy Pryor. But even though it was so they obviously knew that it was an absurd case. But you know they they all say no. Sorry, there's nothing wrong with 18C. Don't you dare try and change it. Yeah, um, it's just it's they're trying to sort of um, I think they're trying to sort of stay a bit a bit appropriate as well because they aren't supporting her after all. But again, they will use this for their own adv- own advantage ultimately, and hopefully we will win in reforming it somehow. And uh, G- uh, Gillian Triggs, she said last night that <laughs> oh, we you know had to accept the complaint because we're legally obliged to accept complaints with a low threshold. So she basically had had came up with some legal excuse about why she let the complaint uh, you know, get as far as it did. And, and I love how she said, oh, uh, the complaint was made in good faith. What? <laughs> just like be, being triggered by you know, a, an objection to racial segregation. I mean, I don't yeah. know. Like I would consider that frivolous, and she said that oh the government can uh, reform that part of the act, and and she she knows that by saying that that that's not going to happen because Labor and the Greens will will have will uh, entertain no change even to stop uh, 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 victitious litigation. They won't. I, they they won't because they have the power to block this legislation. They have the numbers in the Senate. Um, they have Jackie Lambie with them as well with this case. So, and I, I'm pretty sure Next will also support 18C. Um, so yeah, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be really. It's, we need a miracle to reform it. Yeah, and uh, I can't believe that you know we're stuck with this this Human Rights Commission with both Gillian Triggs and uh, Race Discrimination Commissioner Tim Supamasani. Who, of course, if you don't say his name right, say you're a racist. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, I I can't pronounce his name at all, and it's just it's 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 ridiculous that he says something like that because he doesn't live in his country; he lives in a different country now. Country now, and it's just stupid that he expects people in this country to understand how to pronounce his exotic name. Mm. Uh, your full name is quite difficult to pronounce, isn't it, Sukes? 
my name is, it's very difficult to pronounce, and people mispronounce it as well, and I get so offended and humiliated. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, sh I should try and pronounce that one time just to upset you. <laughs> You should, yeah, I mean, you should, because, well, the thing is, if you do, then you might actually get a court case against you, because I might use the 18C against yeah, that, you. Yeah, that's what, like, uh, <laughs> that's what we should, we should do to prove that 18C is, absurd. like, like I'll, like, I'll say something, like, I don't know, call you a curry or something, and you should complain about <laughs> that, and we can see how far the complaint gets. Yeah, we, we could, actually, yeah, we, we could do that, if you want to, but we'll think about it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, well, that was the 18C, um, but we were talking about legislation and passing legislation, and recently legislation was passed on the plebiscite. Oh, well, it wasn't and... passed. Oh, sorry, it was, it was, sorry, yeah, I mean, it was blocked. It was blocked. Yeah, it wasn't passed, but legislation did take place on the plebiscite, and it was blocked. And we had um, the uh, so we had Labour and the Greens who and, blocked it, and, and we also had Holland. Next, yep, yep Next, and, and, and Darren uh, Hinch, yep. And for the coalition, um, we had so the, we had a coalition, and we had One Nation, David Lionhelm from the LDP, and we had Jackie Lambie supporting the supporting the public side, but they lost. Um, uh, Quite surprising, I think. Yeah. I thought it would get passed. Uh, well, once uh, Labour, Greens, Nick Xenophon said they were all against it, that was it, it was never going to get through. Uh, Turnbull said today that he'll try again in a few months, which means that'll also give him another double dissolution um, trigger. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but I can't believe that the advocates of same-sex marriage are like celebrating this as progress. Like, yay, we you know blocked a fossil possible path forward to, you know, uh, same-sex marriage. Yeah, I mean, it's, isn't it amazing? I mean, how is it amazing that they delayed it for, like, another three years? Yeah, because there's um, not going to be a free, a free vote, a uh, free vote. Um, there won't be. Yeah, because why? Because the that was the policy of uh, the coalition to put the issue yeah. to uh, a plebiscite. And why would they submit to you know Labor's uh, policy of a of a free vote? I mean, why why would they you know give Labor the credit for forcing them into that position? Yeah, and it was their election promise as well. Um, they took it to the election. They said they'll have a plebiscite, and they try to do it but you know what else what else um is there to do it's it's blocked now well the advocates like this is how ridiculous they've become is they said we'd rather uh wait for however long uh because a plebiscite would be too triggering yes of course we're yeah right. that's... The, the, the biggest priority in in the modern world is to stop people getting triggered yeah again it just goes to show that Labor, the left in general, is trying to support the new generation of triggered, weak-minded, weak-minded people, and it's just going to harm society, and it just won't get anything done. Yeah, I would have thought that you know, if same-sex marriage is delayed by th three uh, plus years, like wouldn't being you know supposedly second-class citizens for 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 that long, uh, you know, wouldn't gay people be triggered? <laughs> triggered by that i mean you could have had same-sex marriage by february next year and it would be you know legal forever instead there's going to be you know all these all these people all, all these gay people upset because you know the law is discriminatory yeah exactly it's 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 it goes back to themselves ultimately and the thing is since the plebiscite is blocked I'm pretty sure they will actually get a bit more criticism right now because from the mainstream of society who will who will criticize them for actually block, blocking this, you know. Well, um, I feel like I feel like they would get more hate speech well, as uh, they call it. Yeah, a lot of people are becoming, you know, annoyed with uh, the gay lobby now because yeah. they are just behaving, you know, uh, just, uh, you know, like special snowflakes, uh, you know, crying about all this, you know, bigotry and hatred all the time. Yeah, exactly. And ultimately, the thing is that just that just result in more hate speech against them. Um, so they're bringing it all upon themselves, ultimately. Yeah. 
There, there, there were, yeah, there was three reasons why they opposed it. One, because they were worried people would get triggered. The second one yeah. was because they were scared they would lose because they think, because deep down they think that Australians are all homophobes and they'd all uh, vote against it. So they have a real, <laughs> you know, disdain for ordinary people. It was funny that their the original justification for uh, legalising same-sex marriage was the pub, uh, public opinions on our side. And so uh, coalition said, "Okay, let's have a vote." Then, oh no, fuck what the um, you know <laughs> the, the public think. This is a right. <laughs> you know, they, they all of a sudden changed their tune. Oh, we we didn't mean actually ask the people. Yeah. So what did they mean then? So that means they don't support. They're, to, they're totalitarian. The left yeah. is totalitarian. They don't support democracy. They support them having what they want even if it doesn't go well with other people. Well, uh, well, that's why they call it, you know, marriage equality too. Yeah. Uh, because they, they, it's a right. And so, you know, this is where this whole thing comes from. Oh, you know, we should have a, have a vote on other people's rights, which is basically, you know, whatever ever I decide, you know, is a right, uh, should be law uh, <laughs> and stuff, what everyone else thinks. Yeah, well, that's just very selfish. And, um, you know, it's just undemocratic and the thing all i have to say is welcome to democracy yeah it's like you know the only alternative to democracy is to have like a totalitarian dictatorship yeah, yeah and that's what they want really because the left is totalitarian ultimately yeah. And also, uh, the third reason why they didn't want the plebiscite is because they didn't want to give the Conservatives credit for introducing same-sex marriage. So if the plebiscite did pass, then Malcolm Turnbull would be credited with bringing it in. And of course, uh, Labor and the Greens, they think, you know, no, we're the champions of, uh, of uh, you know, uh, gay people. So, uh, you know, we want to be the ones to introduce it. So they would rather it, it be delayed so the left Get yeah. The credit for it. Yeah. It's again. It's, it goes with the political expediency, the political reputation, um, with with the left. So again, very complicated. Um, I mean, I do understand the third reason. I understand it. I just think it's very babyish. It's childish. I think. Oh well, that's what politics is. It's full of this. Uh, yeah. Uh, political, yeah. Uh, political uh, point scoring and gamesmanship. Yeah, and. I want to say, I think one factor that sort of resulted in this whole anti-plebiscite um, stance by the left was the fact that Malcolm actually supported same-sex marriage before. But the thing is, no one expected him, because when he became prime minister, people expected him to um, actually have a free vote. But the thing is, this was a, such a big shock, because um, people weren't expecting a plebiscite from Malcolm. So, well, imagine... The, yeah. The, the, yeah. Back in that, when Tony Abbott was still Prime Minister, they had that um, hour long, uh, the hours long party room meeting where where the majority of the party room voted that they were against same sex marriage. But yeah. Tony Abbott, Julie Bishop, and Joe Hockey thought, well, we've still got to, you know, because pub, uh, public opinion is against us, you know, what, sh what should we sort of do? And that's when they came up with the plebiscite to sort of, um, you know, as, as, a, as a compromise to say, like, you know, we prefer keeping a uh, definition of marriage between a man and a woman, but we'll put it to the people to see what, what they think to, uh, you know, as, as, a, as a way forward. Um, and obviously when Malcolm Turnbull took over, like, you know, he's still just, one, you know, first among equals, so the party room still gets to ultimately decide the policy. Yeah, yeah. And so, you know, oh. he's got to respect the, the majority view of the party room. He has to. I mean, because the thing is, if he doesn't do that, then he'll lose support from the Conservatives. Yeah, oh, um, well, if, if and he allows a free vote, then he'll lose his job. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he will. And uh, people like, uh, MPs like Tim Wilson uh, and Trent Zimmerman, they're not going to cross the floor. Yeah, they... It's, again, yeah, I, I, it's very complex with the actual um, individuals in Parliament. But yeah, I think, you know, I mean... But back to going to the actual direction, I don't know what's going to happen to the actual direction of the plebiscite now. Well, yeah, 
it'll when it, it when it gets uh, put back to the Senate in a few months, it'll get voted down again, and yeah, yeah, that'll be the end of it for three years. So yeah, congratulations, advocates. No same sex yeah, marriage. Exactly. For, you know, what if the coalition wins the next election? That's going to be six years without same sex marriage. That's going to be like, six years now, exactly. But then now they're like, you know, oh, we'd you know rather wait. Like wait, I thought. Like because there was this campaign a few years back uh, uh, to have the, uh, to get these le- get this lesbian couple to New Zealand so they could marry before one of them died of a terminal illness. So they so the gay lobby they're saying oh you know uh, you know gay couples who you know might might want a wedding before they d- uh, die oh no sorry um, you know you have to wait because you know we just don't like the plebiscite. Yeah, it's. Uh, very ironic. Ultimately, that's that's the issue with the left. Ultimately, and there's also this new strand of like uh, you know radical leftist uh, um, gay activists who, and, and this is what they've come up with now that same sex marriage is actually a uh, rich white man's institution. And so that, uh, okay. yeah, so, uh, so that, you know, all these uh, people who want same-sex marriage, they, you know, they only uh, are, you know, rich gay men who, who want it to fit into a high society. Uh, so <laughs> they say, uh, and so their argument is, uh, uh, part of their argument is against the plebiscite is that uh, these, uh, you know, are, are, other class uh, gay men there, um, they're being selfish and not thinking of the the uh, f- uh, the uh, f- uh, more marginalised uh, groups within the LGBT movement, and so that yeah, it's actually it's actually too 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 a conservative proposition now, same sex marriage. Yeah, that's that's a big shift of the actual spectrum, isn't it? Yeah, I mean because they full it... on, they're full on saying it's a conservative thing to support same-sex marriage well because they've never really liked marriage the left I mean, yeah yeah true i mean they, they've they've only like they they only saw a bit they have only really supported same-sex marriage uh you know because it was uh it was deemed to be like gay rights was deemed to be a left-wing issue so they uh thought oh yeah you know let's get on board this because they're a marginalized group but now they're Oh, oh, especially gay men are like they've uh, they're now considered privileged by a lot of uh, left wing groups. Wow! So they're destroying themselves yeah. from within. Oh, <laughs> Because I've heard, I've heard like some gay activists say, oh, you know, we shouldn't worry about um, same-sex marriage anymore. We should, um, uh, yeah, we should uh, continue to push stuff like safe schools and um, okay. uh, uh, g- uh, uh, gender fluid uh, rights. Yeah, well, would you rather they push those rights? I would. I wouldn't. Yeah, like you know. To yeah. Be, like, like yeah. Like, do we really want to have, you know, birth certificates where you can identify, you know, you know, you can say you're an attack helicopter? <laughs> we need to get that right as well, because there are like 20 different attack helicopters. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah because, you know, so... There's like the uh, different, different models. So we can't just assume, we can't generalize because that's homophobic. Yeah. So, so the gay lobby is just going to become more and more far left in the, in the future. Uh, yeah. And like there's a campaign to like uninvite Malcolm Turnbull to um, yeah, the Mardi Gras uh, parade. Oh, really? Which is, <laughs> I, I, I don't even like that parade, but it's supposed to be yeah. you know, politicians from all sides are welcome. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, aren't you, meant to tol- aren't you meant to tolerate? Because the thing is, now you're not tolerating. Now you're just um, being really, really. Ex- ex- exclusive, which is which goes against your original thing anyway. So it doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, so they really have been yeah taken over by the cultural Marxists. The the, gay, the yes, uh, I've been calling it the gay movement. Uh, you know, somebody might get triggered that I didn't say LGBT. <laughs> but that's such a mouthful. The, the, yeah, the cultural Marxists did target gay people um, for their agenda. The gay people were actually a big 
one of their biggest sort of assets they had for their agenda because um, this is history and they used homosexual issues to sort of make sure people will push cultural Marxism more and destroy the Christian foundations of society. Um, and that's a very scary prospect, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, so uh, that, uh, that uh, the news about the plebiscite broke in the in the last uh, twenty four hours. So yeah. Uh, for now, the the issue. Oh well, we hope it'll go away because we're just sick of talking about it all the time. Yeah. But, yeah. We'll obviously talk about it again in the future when uh, plebiscite legislation uh, comes comes forth again. Um, but that's all we've got time for today. Uh, of course, uh, world will change tomorrow um, for the good yep. or uh, for worse. Uh, we'll be back on Thursday with our uh, regular Thursday interview show. Uh, we've got a few guests lined up in the next few weeks, so uh, we're hoping we can bring that to you every Thursday, aren't we? We are, and we are very excited to have our guest. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to the interview, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> Yep, so make sure that uh, you check out the unshackled.net for all the uh, latest latest developments in our in our in our fight fight against the enemies of freedom uh, where we try to break the chains of control so we've got quite a few uh, we've got a couple of new uh, contributors contributors now which is which is very exciting yeah we have um, Luke and Damien from the UCP the Conservative Party um, which I which I love personally <laughs> yep so we've um, and we're also we've also been where our Facebook likes have been going up as well so we're we're glad we're expanding our audience uh, uh, yeah so soon after launching um, yeah and don't forget to uh, subscribe to to the podcast you can do it on iTunes stitcher or tune in radio and we also have a YouTube channel uh, which if you prefer to uh, listen to things on YouTube you can uh, you can do that as well and get leave a rating and a comment as well so people can see how great we are we hope we hope, yeah, and we have a new video on YouTube as well on a new um, WikiLeaks case, which we uploaded today, actually. Yeah, and we plan to uh, release more videos in the future. We do, we do. But that's it for today, and we'll see you on Thursday. So goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs>